First, I'd like to mention that pH is numerically equal to the negative logarithm of the hydrogen ion concentration in moles per liter of the solution and is measured on a scale ranging from 0 to 14. The hydrogen ion concentration in turn depend on the hydroxyl ion concentration by this equation, where Kw is a constant having a value 10 to the power minus 14 and is called the ionic product of water. As the hydrogen ion concentration increase, the pH decrease. As the hydroxyl ion concentration increase, the pH increase. When both the hydrogen ion and hydroxyl ion concentrations are equal, that is 10 to the power minus 7 moles per liter, then the pH is 7 and the solution is termed as neutral. A pH below 7 is acidic and above 7 is alkaline. Now in this demonstration, I have taken two solutions in beakers tagged A and B. We have taken a 5 molar solution of NaOH and a pH meter. This is the electrode which we have to dip in the solution whose pH we wish to measure. This knob is normally kept in the standby mode when we are not measuring pH and is turned to the pH mode when we wish to measure pH of a solution. The pH value is displayed here in the LED display. This instrument has been calibrated with freshly prepared buffer solutions. Clean and dry the electrode with distilled water and tissue paper each time before measuring the pH. Place the beaker A to ensure the electrode dips in the solution. Turn the knob to the pH mode. The pH value will fluctuate for some time and pH reading is taken when it reaches a steady value. The value is equal to more or less 4.1. We similarly measure the pH of the solution kept in beaker B after it reach a steady value when we get pH is equal to more or less 7. Now I take the 5 molar NOH solution and add 0.2 milliliter of this solution in each of the beakers tagged A and B by the help of a 1 milliliter graduated pipette. Now mix the solutions with a glass turn. The pH in the beakers are expected to rise. Now the question is, which will rise more? The beaker B has lesser hydrogen ion concentration because it has a higher pH. So the expectation is that the pH in beaker B will rise more than the solution in beaker A. Let's see what happens actually. The pH of the solution in beaker A has risen to as much as 12. The 
the solution in beaker B is expected to rise even higher. Let's see. Oh my, this is ridiculous. It has gone up to approximately 4.8. Let me explain the phenomenon. Beaker A contained a 10 to the power minus 4 molar HCl solution. HCl ionizes completely in water. So the hydrogen ion concentration was 10 to the power minus 4 moles per liter. That's the reason why the initial pH of the beaker was close to 4. When we added 0.2 milliliter of 5 molar NH solution, we actually added 10 to the power minus 3 moles in the beaker which has a capacity of 100 ml. Therefore molar concentration of NOH added is equal to 10 to the power minus 2 moles per liter. Out of this 10 to the power minus 4 moles per liter would be used up in neutralizing H plus ions. Therefore OH minus ions that are remaining is 10 to the power minus 2 minus 10 to the power minus 4 equal to 0 0.0099 moles per liter which gives a pH which is approximately equal to 12. This was the case in beaker A. Now beaker B contained a buffer solution containing 0.1 moles of acetic acid and 0.1 mole sodium acetate. What is actually a buffer solution? It's nothing but a mixture of weak acid and a salt of its conjugate base that is acetate ion or a mixture of a weak base and a salt of its conjugate acid that is ammonium ion. The characteristic of a buffer solution is to resist the change in pH when small quantities of acid or alkali is added to it. Now I'm going to explain the phenomena in detail. The buffer solution is 0.1 moles per liter of acetic acid which dissociates like this. Since it is a weak acid, the dissociation constant Ka is very small. Here x is the degree of dissociation. The equilibrium concentration is like this. x is very small when compared to 1. So this can be neglected. And it can be said that the concentration of acid also remain equal to 0.1 moles per liter even after dissociation. Then what would be the pH of 0.1 molar acetic acid? For this purpose we calculate x from this equation which is calculated to be equal to 1.35 into 10 to the power minus 2. Therefore, hydrogen ion concentration will be 0.1 into x which is equal to 1.35 into 10 to the power minus 3 moles per liter. This gives a pH which is equal to 2.87. Now, in this solution we add 0.1 moles of sodium acetate which dissolves completely in water giving 0.1 moles of acetate ion. This 0.1 mole acetate ions is large enough when compared to this amount. Therefore, now the concentration of acetate ions is more or less equal to 0.1 moles. Some of this acetate ions, say Y moles, will react with Y moles of H plus ions to form Y moles of acetic acid. Now, this amount is very much less than 0.1. So, the concentration of acetate ions and acetic acid remain more or less equal to 0.1 even after reaction with H plus ion. The new equilibrium is somewhat like this. And pH may be calculated from this equation. It is calculated to be pH equal to pKa plus log salt concentration divided by acid concentration. This equation is called the henderson hasselbalch equation for finding the pH of an acidic buffer. For an alkaline buffer, the equation is like this. So the pH of acetic acid sodium acetate buffer is 4.74. Now when we add 0.2 milliliter of 5 molar NOH or 10 to the power minus 2 moles of OH minus ions to it, what will happen? 
it will attack the undissociated acid like this and H plus ions will remain unaffected. So the acid concentration will reduce by 10 to the power minus 2 moles and the acetate ion concentration will increase by 10 to the power minus 2 moles. Putting these new values in the henderson russell balch equation, we get pH equal to 4.83. Now you know why pH of the buffer has not increased. If we add HCl to the buffer instead of NOH, then what will happen? The added H plus ions will react with the acetate ions to form undissociated acid. In this case, the acid concentration will increase and the salt concentration will reduce, which is just opposite to what happened when we added NOH.